Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a more fun example of using this uh, DWIN display that I've been showing you in my last few videos. And I made some kind of uh, environmental parameters station or weather station if you can say the parameters. So I will show you how can I fetch the data from the sensors which uh, produce these data. And then I will show you how to send it to the display and uh, display it uh, as numbers. So you can see that we have five parameters and I have already drawn everything. So the background uh, is created in Photoshop. So I just created the text with the colors and uh, then these empty boxes. And then uh, I created uh, these uh, boxes where the values will end up, which are coming from the uh, Arduino. And uh, they are all the same uh, boxes and they do all the same uh, things. Uh, they just receive different parameters. So I will just uh, quickly go through them, what they do, and then uh, we will see how they work. So first of all, uh, these boxes are so-called data variables display uh, boxes. So we can uh, get them under the text uh, show menu. And then the first uh, option here is this data variable display. So you can click on that and then you can create a certain a rectangle somewhere and then uh, assign the values and parameters to them. So that's what I did. So for example the air temperature which is represented in degrees Celsius will end up in this uh, blue rectangle and if you look at the right side of the display you can see the following parameters. So the data will be sent to the uh, 1000 VP address and then uh, the color of the uh, font is just uh, black. Uh, I'm using the default uh, font and uh, the font size is 24. Uh, I left the alignment at left. It can be changed also to right and center. So that is the position of the characters inside this uh, box. Then I don't care about these two uh, checkboxes, but what is more important uh, is the variable type. And I want to emphasize this once again. Uh, I emphasized this in my previous video. There are not many people or basically no people, at least uh, based on my uh, research, who are showing how to use float uh, with this display. So I'm showing you how to use it. And I'm using this float for bytes because uh, that's enough. So then what we will do here is that I use three integer digits, which is too much because uh, that would mean that the temperature would be more than 100 degrees and uh, I would not be able to make this uh, video for you if I was uh, sitting in 100 degrees but uh, for the sake of uh, demonstration this will be three uh, digits and uh, the decimal digits so the numbers to the right side of the decimal point so the tenth and the hundredth uh, values uh, will be shown because I have two digits and then uh, then I leave all these at uh, default the rest of the parameters and that's all and then humidity is set up in the same way but uh, the value will arrive at the 1100 uh, VP address then the air pressure also the same but then I have 1200 as as the VP address and then 1300 uh, for the next value and for the last value is 1400 and for the CO2 concentration and the dust density you can see that we have larger boxes so obviously I changed the font size to a bit uh, larger value and uh, this is basically it so this is the display uh, that I created so at, at this point, actually, I can just uh, generate the files and uh, then I can upload it uh, to my display. So that's what I will uh, do here. And I will not show you how to create all the config files and everything because I have a dedicated video just for that, how to configure the display, how to format the SD card and so on. So that uh, video is now shown at the top right corner of this video as a notification so click on that if you want to know how to do the uploading 
But uh, what I will do now is uh, I will upload the uh, code and the config files to the display and I will show you what the display does. So now you can see the display and you can see that the values are changing uh, real time. So uh, on the left panel where we have the temperature, the humidity and the pressure, uh, that set of data is provided by one single board that is the BME 280. I will show you the Arduino code so you will see how those values are fetched. And then we have two other sensors. One is the dust sensor and uh, the other is the CO2 concentration. And uh, now I touch the thermometer module so you should see some increase in the temperature soon. And I'm touching, touching the back of the board so the heat transfer is not so good but you can see that now uh, the temperature is increasing. So that is because of my uh, finger. And then uh, I can uh, blow on the CO2 concentration measuring uh, chip. And my exhaled uh, air or yeah, CO2 is changing the values on the sensor as you can see. And then for the dust density, I cannot really create uh, dust. So I don't really know how to change that. Obviously, I could uh, light a candle and uh, when I blow the candle and uh, put it out, uh, then the generated smoke actually drives this uh, smoke or dust uh, sensor uh, crazy. So uh, that could be one option. So I will try that. So now you can see a sudden spike both in CO2 and dust because I'm uh, blowing the smoke towards the uh, detector. So that's how it works. But uh, what I want to show you is that we can have all these fun parameters and uh, simultaneously show them on the display. And uh, as you can see, they can be shown as uh, floating point numbers. So I think that's a very cool thing. So let's jump back to my computer and I show you how the Arduino code is uh, constructed uh, which sends uh, the data to the display. So here is the sketch and we have the wire library because uh, most of the sensors uh, work on I2C. We have the software serial for the display and then these three uh, libraries are used for the two sensors, the BME280 and uh, the CCS811. Uh, this sensor is the temperature, humidity and pressure sensor and this is the VOC or volatile organic compound uh, sensor and in this case that uh, VOC is the carbon dioxide. And then uh, here we just create the instances so we have the serial, uh, then the CCS811 and the BME280 and then I need two pins for the software serial, so they are defined here. And then we have a bunch of uh, other variables. So I store the concentration of the CO2. And uh, then this sensor can also measure the temperature, but it's a bit offset as compared to other thermometers. So I don't use it, but I still yeah, keep it. And then uh, I have the dust sensor. And actually, this is a very fun sensor, so I will talk about uh, it uh, in a bit. But uh, we have an analog pin here, so that measures uh, some voltage which is coming out from this sensor. And then we have an LED pin for the sensor because there is an LED inside the sensor which is uh, lit up with a certain period of time. And uh, that needs a pin, a digital pin, which turns it on and off. And then uh, we store the raw data, so the ADC value uh, coming from the ADC of the dust measure pin, so from this pin. And then uh, after the conversion, I uh, calculate the dust density. And actually I have a video on this system, but uh, in that video I used a very tiny display, but uh, the electronics part is entirely valid for this uh, video, so please check that video. I put the link of the video in the top right corner so you will be able to uh, find it there. But uh, how this sensor works is very funny because it has an infrared LED and a phototransistor or some kind of receiver uh, on the other side of the box. 
inside. They cannot see each other directly, the LED and the phototransistor, but they can see each other through the dust which scatters the light inside. And the more dust you have, uh, the more light is uh, scattered. So the scattered light uh, and then the signal created by the scattered light is proportional to the amount of uh, dust. So from this, which is basically the voltage signal, what we read, we can get uh, the density of the dust in a certain units. And uh, in the data sheet of this sensor, there is a curve, which I just uh, fitted. And based on the fitting of the curve, I got the A and B parameters. So I get an arbitrary voltage value from the AD converter. I can convert that into a, let's say, human readable uh, value, which represents the dust density in the air. So that's how this sensor works. And then uh, I have the three values uh, captured from the BME280 value uh, sensor. So I just, yeah, simply store them in floating point variables. So I have the serial. This is for the USB part and then the other serial for the display. And then uh, they don't really need so much explanation. This is just how you start up the uh, sensor. Uh, and, and basically that's all. So if there is something uh, going wrong, then the code gets uh, stuck here and then uh, the code will not proceed. So you will notice that if nothing happens, then something is wrong with the connections or the sensors. And uh, basically uh, that's all. Here I just do a reading uh, because I also used uh, the uh, thermometer part in earlier uh, versions of this code. And then uh, this is again copy paste uh, from the original library basically uh, again if something goes wrong with the sensor in this case with the bme uh, 280 uh, then we get these uh, or one of these uh, error messages and then uh, since we need to switch the pin for the led inside the uh, dust sensor uh, we need to define an output pin and that's that's here and then here we have the loop and I already put it in the comments here that uh, this could have been solved with a more elegant way but here this is just for the sake of the demonstration and not for showing you how to code efficiently or how to write the best Arduino code so I put delays in between the functions but of course it would be better with uh, with timers using the millis. So let's measure the dust. So first we turn on the LED inside the sensor and then we wait uh, 280 microseconds and then we do a reading. So that's what happens here. So we measure the uh, peak of the output pulse and then uh, we turn off the LED. And then uh, since we got some value inside this dust sensor analog value, First, we convert it into voltage, and then uh, based on the fitting, I convert it into micrograms per cubic meters. So this is how it's done. And then I use this function, which I created for my uh, DWIN display, and this comment is incorrect, I can see it already, uh, which accepts two arguments. One is the parameter uh, or variable, to be more precise, so the dust density, and the other is the address of the variable on the display. So uh, from this uh, hexadecimal number I can see that this will be the 1400 VP address. And then just to double check everything I print it on the USB serial terminal as well so that we can see it also. And then uh, we measure the VOCs so that's the other uh, sensor. So first we make sure that we can communicate with it and then uh, we read the data uh, from it. So uh, the library has its own built-in function. So when you call that function, it just throws uh, a return value, which will, uh, yeah, gives you the CO2 concentration. So we just fetch that. And uh, then uh, we print the float number uh, on the display. So again, we take the variable value and then we send it to a certain address. And then I also put, uh, put it on the 
serial terminal on the computer so I can double check if the display receives the same value that I receive on the serial terminal. And uh, here I don't uh, do anything with this. I could have done this uh, just as a check. Maybe I do it here. Uh, as I said, uh, this sensor can also measure the temperature, the room temperature. Uh, but I don't really trust its value and then we will see it why. But let me do this. So now we will see it on the serial terminal. So this is done. And then we have the BME uh, sensor here. And this is again, it's very, it's made uh, very comfortable for us because the built-in library of this uh, sensor uh, just calls a function and the return value is uh, just thrown into this variable. So then uh, I print it uh, to the corresponding VP address. And then humidity, again, same. So I just have to print it to the corresponding VP address. And I do the same with the pressure and I do a division here because uh, I have to express the values in kilopascals. I want to see it in that unit. So then uh, yeah, I divide it by 1000 and then I send it to the corresponding uh, address and also on the serial terminal of course. So then let's see how this send float number works. So it accepts uh, two arguments. One is the float value and the other is the VP address. So we have two fixed values which we always have to send uh, to the serial port and that is the header. So that is the header of the message what we send on the serial to the, to the display. And then we have the length of the total of the whole message basically. So that consists of the write command as you can see one byte. Uh, VP address two bytes so we are at three now and uh, we have four bytes here, which is the length of the float. So three plus four is seven. Uh, so yeah, that's what I wrote here. And uh, then we have the write command, we have the VP address, and uh, we always change the high bytes here, or yeah, the first uh, written bytes. So then uh, we all only change these. Uh, these are never changed. Therefore, also, this is the only argument that we need to uh, take uh, for, for the function. And then uh, I define a uh, array for the hex here. So that holds the floating point number expressed in four bytes or on four bytes. Uh, but in order to do that, I need to call a function, this guy here, which will actually uh, do some kind of uh, computer magic for me and we'll uh, turn our floating point number into four values in an array. So this float to hex uh, down here uh, that is doing the magic. So what this does is that the value of this f byte you can see this tiny star here which is which says it's a pointer uh, this is a pointer uh, to the f, which is the floating point number. And that is what we pass uh, to this function. And uh, the floating point number is nothing else than just the reading from the sensor. Uh, and then that uh, floating point number is uh, cast into a byte uh, array. So then uh, those values are uh, copied into a, into a new array, basically, uh, which is now filled up with... Uh, with the bytes which uh, build up our uh, floating point number. So then uh, when this uh, conversion is completed, then we have to send uh, this floating point number uh, to the display actually in four portions. But uh, instead of sending it as uh, hex zero, hex one, two, three, so in the, let's say normal order, we actually do it the other way around uh, because we have to flip the uh, the endianness of uh, of this uh, value that we send uh, to the uh, display, but then uh, yeah, I just send these four bytes, which uh, represents the floating point number, and as you could see, 
the display was able to process this uh, set of numbers and it was able to show us the correct values. And uh, just for fun, let me open the serial terminal after I connected this to the USB instead of uh, external power supply. And now you can see why I don't accept the temperature readings uh, coming from the CO2 uh, sensor, because sometimes the readings are uh, not the best. So this is showing uh, 31.58 degrees Celsius, so that's not so good. However, sometimes it's really close uh, to the other uh, thermometer. So I don't know what to trust. And now it's uh, undershooting it by uh, nearly three degrees almost. So uh, yeah, it's not consistent. So I, I, I don't really see it, uh, see the point of, uh, of using it. So therefore I'm only using the uh, BME 280. But uh, basically this was the whole demonstration. So I just wanted to show you that uh, we can easily gather uh, the values of uh, several sensors and then we can send them uh, to the display very quickly and now you can see that uh, we have uh, basically these two functions and uh, they can do the trick for us to be able to show uh, floating point numbers on the even display so you can uh, use this code and then you can send your own uh, floating point numbers uh, to the display and I think it's very uh, convenient and uh, comfortable to use a function which takes uh, the arguments. Uh, so it just makes the work more uh, easy. At least for me, it's more easy because, uh, for example, uh, here I read uh, the value. So I put it in a variable and then I can immediately throw the variable into this argument and uh, also attach basically the uh, VP address. And then I know that, okay, this value will end up on this VP address. So it's very easy to, to program it uh, this way. So please uh, check also the link in the description, which will lead you to my website because I wrote a short article about this. So you can uh, see how things work. And uh, I also put uh, the circuit schematics on my website. So you will see how everything communicates with the Arduino and with the display. And also, uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I can uh, buy more stuff and uh, show more things on the tutorial. And stay tuned because I'm continuing this uh, Divin Display uh, tutorial uh, series. So there will be more and more uh, stuff coming up. And you can guess, for example, that uh, since I show these values, uh, it would be very nice to put them on a graph and show a graph like how the temperature develops during the day or how the humidity uh, changes and so on. So there will be several interesting examples uh, in the near future. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.